So today we're going to be learning about angle measures and these are our content standards, some more geometry content standards, and our mathematical practices when we get ready to uh, begin our exercises. So previously you've measured line segments. Now today we're going to measure and classify angles and we're going to identify and use congruent angles and the bisector of an angle. Got quite a bit of new vocabulary today. Array, opposite rays, angle, side, vertex, interior, exterior, degree, right angle, acute angle, obtuse angle, angle bisector. Okay, so let's look at uh, our first example. First of all, we need to understand some of our vocabulary today. Uh, the first word that I mentioned today was ray. And a ray is part of a line. Um, you, we see line A, F, but say we started at point B. Well, if we started at point B, we could go B to A. That would be a ray. Uh, a ray has an end point, and then it continues indefinitely in one direction. Now, this line has opposite rays because BE or BF could be the other ray. And notice BF and BA are opposite rays. They have the same common endpoint B. And because we have a B, that could be a vertex when we've got two sides that are non collinear meeting at a common point. So that's how we get an angle is by a, an endpoint and two rays. So an angle is formed by two non-collinear rays that have a common endpoint, and the rays are called sides of the angle, and the common endpoint is called the vertex. In this example, we're asked to name all the angles that have B as a vertex. So notice angle 5 has B as a vertex, angle 6 has B as a vertex, and angle A or 7 has B as a vertex. Also, this one doesn't have a number, but we can label it A, B, G, angle A, B, G. Whenever we're naming an angle, if you don't have a number for it or something that, to, to, that specifies that that is a unique angle, then you name it with the vertex listed in the middle, always in the middle. We're asked to name the sides of angle 5. So first of all, let's look. Angle 5. So here's a side, here's a side. So ray BG, ray BE, or we could call it ray BF. Both of those are legitimate answers. We're to write another name for angle six. So let's locate angle six. So this is the angle we're talking about. So we could call it angle EBD, we could call it angle FBD, we could call it angle DBF, or we could call it angle DBE. Either one of those answers are correct. You don't have to list all four, but there are four different ways we could uh, name that angle. So now time for you to check your progress. Which angle has point X as a vertex? So pause for a moment and look your cho your choices, and then restart the video in just a little bit. Okay, notice it said point X as a vertex, so because X is a vertex, we know that X had to be in the middle. Which one has X in the middle? Ah, there we go. Is AXB? AXB? Yes, because that X is labeling that point right there, that vertex. So AXB is a legitimate answer. Good job. Which ray is a side of angle 3? So pause for a moment and study your your options and then come back and see that your answer is correct. Okay, which ray is a side of angle 3? So it has two sides and it could be XN or XA and the only choice they give us here for an option is XN. Good job. Okay, which of the following is another name for angle 3? Oh, we're angle 3. Okay, so pause for a moment and see what you find. Angle 3, of course, we already know that that's point X, 
So x has to be in the middle, so we've only got two choices. And is Rxb angle 3? No, that's on the other side. So it has to be NXA, or we could call it AXN, but X needed to be in the middle. Good job. Now here's something that's very, very familiar to you, where we're going to classify angles. We're going to classify them whether they're right, and we know that a right angle measures 90 degrees, and it's marked by this little red box. That means it's a 90. An acute angle means it's so tiny and it's so cute it's less than 90 so it's um, you'll see this marking okay that is smaller than 90 and then there's obtuse it's bigger than 90 I always think acute so little acute and obtuse is obese it's big it's bigger than 90 okay so now we're going to measure and classify some angles first of all they want us to measure angle T Y V. So let's look. T, Y, V. What do we notice about markings on this diagram? Yeah, there's a 90 right here. So if this is 90, what would you guess T, Y, V is? Hmm. Yep, it's 90 because it's the other half of this, this uh, line right here, right? it's being bisected this is an angle bisector and it is perpendicular that means it divides this angle T Y X did you think of that as an angle well it it is it's a 180 degree angle but this uh, ray Y V bisects it, it bisects it exactly in half so this T Y V is a 90 now let's measure W Y T W Y T what do you think is it less than 90 is it 90 is it greater than 90 well if we were to place a protractor on it and this is where we're going to learn about using a protractor there is usually a little hole right here in the center of a protractor if you would set it right on the vertex and then you can use either of the zeros. It depends on which way your angle is going, but both of these are measured zero. And you'd lay that along one side, then you can measure. So W, Y, T looks like, and we know that's greater than 90, right? So there's two measurements along the protractor, and there's one set of numbers that are going to be less than 90, and the other is greater than 90. Well, we know that W, Y, T is greater than 90, so we're going to read off the 130. Because we definitely know it's larger than 50, don't we? Yes. So we just have to use a little common sense there. So we're going to use this, this side, so it's greater than 90, so it's an obtuse angle. Now we're to measure T, Y, you and classify it as right, acute, or obtuse. So is it right? Is it obtuse? Is it acute? Well if we were to lay a protractor on it, notice that this time it's less than 90. So we're going to use the smaller side and it lies right on 45. 45 is smaller than 90 so it's an acute angle. So now we're to measure C, Z, D and classify it as right, acute, or obtuse. So take just a minute and study this diagram and then come back and let me know what you find out. Okay, C, Z, D. We know it's greater than 90, don't we? So we know it's obtuse and because it's obtuse we're going to read the larger number which is 150. Good job. Let's try this. C, Z, E. Classify it as right, acute, or obtuse. Tell me what that measurement is. It is 90. See, they were sort of tricking you here, but you had to know that 90 is a right angle. But you got that, didn't you? Okay, let's try one more. So pause the video again. Study D, Z, X. Tell me if it's acute, 
right or obtuse, and what is that measurement? Okay, it is acute, and so we're going to read that small side, and it is 30 degrees. Good job, folks. Oh, so now we get to um, have a little challenge. This is our last example we're going to work with. Um, we're told uh, about standard shapes are often used to provide a stimulating environment for a young child's room. Now, we have a five-pointed star sticker, and its vertices are labeled. So this is what we're supposed to find out. What is the measurement of GBH, GBH, and HCI, HCI, if angle GBH is congruent, that's what that sign means, congruent, to angle HCI. That means they have the same measurement, okay? We're also told that the measurement of GBH is equal to 2x plus 5 and that HCI is equal to 3x minus 10. So you might want to take just a moment, write down what is being given to you in this problem because it's fixing to vanish when I go to the next screen. Okay, so the thing we've got to do is we're going to solve for x and this is what we've been given, that angle GBH is congruent to angle HCI. So by definition of congruent angles, we know that the measurement of these two angles are equal. If they're congruent, then the measurement is equal. So pay close attention to the, these statements because we'll be using them a lot from now on. We are also told that the measurement of angle GBH is 2x plus 5 and we're given that the measurement of angle HCI is 3x minus 10. Okay, so let's add 10 to both sides. Subtract 2x from both sides, so we know that x is 15. Are we finished? No, nope, don't think so. We have to go ahead and find uh, the value. We're going to use the value of x, but we've got to find the measurement of either angle. Since they're equal to each other, if we find the measurement of one, we know the measurement of the other. So we're going to start with uh, the measurement of angle GBH. We know it's 2x plus 5. We found out that x is 15. So 30 plus 5 is 35. So we know that the measurement of angle GBH is equal to the measurement of angle HCI. And so the measurement of angle HCI must also be equal to 35. So the measurement of angle GBH is equal to 35. And the measurement of angle HCI is equal to 35. Good job. Now, time for you to check your progress. So, pause the video and work the problem, and then come back and see how you did. Ah, did you get A, the measurement of angle BHC, and the measurement of angle DJE are both 105? Well, first of all, you were given that they were congruent, so we also know that the measurement of BH, angle BHC is 4x plus 5, and the measurement of angle DGE. DJE is 3x plus 30, so we're going to say 4x plus 5 is equal to 3x plus 30. We're going to find out that x is equal to 25, so we're going to substitute 25 in. If we do it right here, 3 times 25 is 75 plus 30 is that 105. Since we know that they are congruent, then the other angle measure is 105. Good job, and you're ready to begin your exercises.